for YouTube where I start now so we don't have all this pre okay. Okay. in there. So, hi everyone, I'm Tim Von Rieden and welcome to this weekly Wednesday live stream. We do these every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central Time, that's minus 5 GMT if you're outside of the States, and I usually post a topic about two hours beforehand or I tell you a week in advance. Today, we have a very special guest artist with us. This is Victor Mari. Hi guys. He is Moulin Blue on, I would say, most social media? Yeah, on Instagram and... Yeah, on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go check him out. Can you write it right yeah, there? Yeah, for sure. Um, for those of you who don't know, Victor is an artist at Riot Games, which makes League of Legends, a game that I was kind of infamously known for <laughs> spending a lot of time in about three years ago, for about three years. And uh, I think v Victor and I met, I want to say it was Spectrum three years ago, right? Yes. At Spectrum. And instantly I felt like I had a connection with him, but his art is fantastic. So if you have a moment for us, the stream starts, I would go check it out. And he has such a quality and pace to his stuff that I feel like mine lacks. So it's almost like you find someone, see what I mean? I have a oh, bird feeder, squirrel. but only oh squirrels God. eat with it. He just looks like a ball. I know, right? He's like a Pokemon. Oh, wait till they, they go upside down to eat it. They don't eat it on the pole. So that's why it's so funny. Look at that hoodlum. <laughs> See? Oh my God. This is what they do. Wait, this is Hold the on. real show right yeah, here. Yeah, wait. Let me... I wonder if they can see... Oh, it's going to adjust. It's going to adjust. It has to. No. Is it? Oh, no. Overexposed. Oh, that's kind of a shame. You guys are missing out on some squirrel action. <laughs> that sounds so bad. <laughs> <laughs> They're really squirrely out there. But yeah, they eat upside down. Anyways... Um, I guess I'm going to let you do more of your introduction, but before you get into that, if any of you guys have any comments or questions while we're doing the stream, just put at Von Art before it. I'm going to be acting as moderator today so that Sean can take a rest and keep working on his project. So I'm here as your moderator, you're here to draw, and I'm excited to learn as much as the people watching. So officially, cool. would you like to start? Yeah, thank you, Tim. Well, thanks a lot for uh, introducing me and having me on the show. Uh, very gracious of you to invite me to your home up here in Wisconsin as well. Um, they were not having Spectrum Fantastic Art live this year, unfortunately, for the first time in, what, five, six years. So I just took the time that I would normally take to go to Spectrum in Kansas City. And instead, I'm visiting Tim in the Vaughn House. And it is beautiful, and the weather is great, and I'm a little bit under the weather, but I've been saving my voice for y'all. Uh, my name is Victor. I'm originally from France. I grew up there. I moved here when I was seven. Uh, we go back every year. I grew up in Austin, Texas. Shout outs to the Texans in the chat. <laughs> um, and then I've gone to school in Chicago, in Florida. And then, like Tim said, I've been working at Riot Games for the past three years on League of Legends. Um, yeah, I'm excited to be here and do some sketching for Mermaid. I'm going to be using sort of a freestyle technique that I like to do when I'm on vacation, uh, which is uh, sort of photo bashing a couple previous paintings to create some random shapes and then seeing what we can pull out of it. Uh, should be fun. Oh, we, do we got some Austinites? Chris from Austin. Shout outs to Chris. <laughs> uh, I want to move to Austin. It's getting real crowded, so, because everybody wanted to move there. <laughs> Really? Oh, yeah. is it just really nice there? Yeah, it was, but... I've never no. been to Austin. They didn't build enough roads to keep up, but mm. it's still worth going. It is it is a beautiful city. I love Austin. I'm going to point this as much in your direction so you okay. can save your voice, because I feel like I'm loud by nature, yes. so I can... Like, Mike will catch me. I'm usually but... louder, but I have to save it. Yeah. Yeah. I even have my tea. Yeah, and basically the way that this will work is you'll be drawn, and I'll just shoot them at you. Okay. You don't even have to look at the chat at all. Okay, okay, good. All I'm, responsibility I'm of that is very bad me. at multitasking. <laughs> Sweet. Are we jumping in? Yep. I'm just oh, yeah, get, you I'm take the mouse. Him. It's all you. I guess before I start shooting questions at you, do you want to explain what you're doing first? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see. Um, I started with blank canvas. I know I want to do a horizontal piece. That's like the first decision you have to make, vertical or horizontal. Um, I grabbed three previous pieces. This is like the my bunny piece. Um, this was a figure drawing of Edith, and then this was like a photo study I did. 
and I just throw them together and I sort of play with the opacity and the layer styles just to get some interesting relationships, but mostly I'm not I'm not even trying to build the piece yet here. I'm just trying to kill the white of the canvas. <gasps> Thank you, <laughs> Secret Slinky, for following. <laughs> and Devin Downer for yep. following. All right, how much of a dunk is this one, do you think? Oh, no, hearts don't do much. Oh, okay, okay. So those just kind of like build up, and then when you get oh, a start. Oh, then it explodes. Yeah. All right, I'm holding out for the stars then. Um, but mostly, yeah, I'm, I'm killing the white on the canvas because I feel like that's the hard, hardest part when you're making art. Is that a star? Oh, that sounds yeah. really jingly. That <laughs> okay, Brandon Payne, really thank you jingly. so much for subscribing. Now I get to watch it. So now it should hit some of the hearts that were on the top. <laughs> oh my god. The destruction. <laughs> it's out of control. Right? Oh, wait, let me move this up. There we go. Yeah. So once we have some nonsense on the screen, it's less intimidating. It doesn't feel like I'm starting from scratch. Um, and. It's possible, though pretty unlikely, that I can use some of this random texture buildup and some of these colors in my final painting, but I'm not married to any of it. So I'm just gonna jump in. Hi, Sean. 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 Sean is a beautiful boy. <laughs> a hug? <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna move down. Um, so some people are already asking. Okay. Oh, you know what though? What's up? What's I up? feel like this is an easy one where it's not like a super question, so I think it's easier. Oh shit! There's super questions. I'm yeah. ready for those too. <laughs> Bring it. Uh, Jim says, "Hi, Victor. What kind of art do you do for Riot for League? Sorry if this was answered already. So kind of give like your history oh. with Riot and how okay. you got there. And let's do this real, real quick before I start painting. Maybe is it okay if I show them? Yes. Like this." Um, and that was Tim, Jim? Jim. Jim. Jim, my friend. I work on Splash Art for League, uh, which is, I guess, the sort of final character illustrations that you see in the game. So these are the ones I've done so far. Um, Yorick, mm. Warwick, Gallio, Swain, Dragon Train Tristana. Wait, I didn't know you did this one. Really? Yeah. The oh. the, I enjoyed painting the pup. Oh, do we got a star or a heart? Uh, thank you, One Evictus, for following. Wait, I'm gonna put this up so we can. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, there you go. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, Dragon Trainer Tristana, Elderwood Hecarim, which is my favorite because I love drawing nature stuff. Uh, Ergot, hmm. Beast Hunters, Gangplank, which wasn't used. It was my art test. And Dark Wait, Star really? Thresh. Yeah, yeah. Uh oh. I think that's all of them. Oh, and uh, SKT World Splash, but <laughs> we don't talk about that one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's just, it's fine. So, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. This is the stuff I've been up to at Riot for the past three years. It looks like it's not a lot of work, but I also um, do outsourcer feedback. So, we have like a roster of outsourcers that paint splashes for us, and I basically art direct those and polish those, and I've worked on, oh. I mean, we're probably getting on a hundred splashes that I've art directed or polished what? at this point. Yeah, yeah. I wish I was doing more just my stuff, but it, I've actually learned a lot from having to um, to edit and uh, art direct other people's stuff as well. Just keeps me. Yeah. Do we got bits? Oh, how many oh, bits? Those did we got? not affect anything. Two little bits. Two bits. You, I'll take it, man. That's some good bits. Um, and then just while we're here, I guess some of my older stuff. Uh, this mm -hmm. is some college work. Uh, this is much more in line with sort of um, what I enjoy doing is like the figure as landscape or or giants, basically. Uh, when I was a kid, I would go to the mountains with my grandparents, featured here in this little corner. Mm. And um, I would always picture the mountains like getting up and walking away and stuff like that. Um, or imagining like river spirits or, or what have you. Uh, this was a league piece as well. Uh, Shadow of the Colossus, very mm. influential game for me. Uh, obviously. I'd say, just based <laughs> on what you just said. Yeah, too. I love Giants, and it's a very moody, like, beautiful uh, soundtrack game where you just fight, uh, I think it's 16 Giants. And the third one is my favorite. He's got a sword arm. Card art, um, comic from school, Giants. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, yeah, there's a theme here, just giant everything. Um, and then real quick, just to top it off, 
uh, my other series that I've worked on mm -hmm. was the Seven Deadly Sins, which was playing more with like graphic design and shapes, uh, which I really, really enjoyed working on. And I like it as a, as a topic uh, or as a theme in general. So black and white on these is still one of my favorite pieces I've done. Um, this one as well, Pride. Uh, and then the other series I worked on was The Little Prince. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all have read the book, but uh, it's a very famous book, uh, especially if you grew up in France, because the author is French, uh, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. But it's this beautiful, beautiful children's book where the little prince visits um, all these planets and meets these characters like the businessman or the lamplighter or the geographer, and he learns like little lessons from each of them. It's, it's wonderful, and it totally holds up uh, if you want to read it as, a, as an adult or if you want to read it to your kids. Uh, or little siblings. Wonderful book. Um, so I have those little designs on here too. So yeah, that's a little little snapshot into my work. There's also stuff on Instagram, sketches and stuff. And then on Tumblr, I have uh, sort of a variety of stuff on there as well. But yeah, I'm going to go back to the painting. Bam. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I know, this is going to be the one problem. Is that oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's fine, it's fine. Anyway, I'm going to shoot these five really quick at Okay, you. rapid fire. So Because normally it'll just go by itself, but since we missed so many. Okay. Um, Suai, Suai says, Victor, so I don't know if you remember, but we've actually met in person before. I was a classmate of Eli Allen's, and we all, plus Evan, went to the first Spectrum together. Oh, my goodness. Um, I feel like you know. Hold on. Yeah, Eli and Evan are my roommates now, funny enough. Yeah, let me see. I'll probably recognize it instantly. Jonathan Hamilton. Jonathan. Oh, it's Jonathan. What's up, Jonathan? How are you uh, doing? I should just say that. I don't know why I kept saying the user. Dude, your work's been freaking, I'm going to censor myself, freaking phenomenal recently. Just really, really inspiring. Beautiful work. As someone who struggles with making things really beautiful, like I like to work kind of rough, I uh, I really love how smooth and, and thoughtful and colorful your pieces are. <laughs> Good to see you here, man. Gonzo says, "What pact with the devil did you specifically? Did you do specifically to get your skills, Victor?" Um, I was like, "Mr. Devil, I'm really bored. Is there a better way?" And he was like, "No, it's just hard work." And I was like, "Oh, rats!" <laughs> <laughs> went back to drawing. Yeah, went back to the drawing board. Sketcher says, uh, "Jesus Christ, you did these! I'm amazed. These are some of my favorite splash arts." Oh well, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I get a lot of feedback and help from the, my teammates on the Splash team. Oh, there we go. Okay, you can keep drawing now. Okay, we're back, baby. I don't need the mouse. You got the power. So Mary is asking, got any advice for someone hop hoping to get in the game or animation industry after college? Um, yes, I do. Uh, I guess I like I like having caveats. So bear with me while I caveat. Um, but this is, this is very much, you know, my opinion, and it's based on my own personal journey. There is no right way to do things. Uh, but in my mind, when I think about the people we try to hire and the, people, the kind of people we're looking for, uh, we're looking for people with really, really strong fundamentals and people with really good storytelling skills. Um, it's kind, it can be kind of misleading to look at people's work and be like, oh, like the, the detail is so great or they know so much software um, or this or that. But at the end of the day, it's like, is it a good story? And do you understand the fundamentals of art uh, inside and out? And can you wield them to solve any problem? Because once you get into the biz, it's no longer so much about, or that's not fair. It's not that it's not about your own personal voice, but you also have to work within the confines of like pretty strict uh, or pretty tight problem space, which is handed down to you by whatever product you're working on. So you need to be like flexible and adaptable and know how to solve a variety of problems, which I think can be the most easily achieved by having really strong fundamentals. I think that was the question. Yeah, right? yeah. no, that nailed it pretty good, pretty well. Uh, Gonza says, wasn't the Irelia one your art test, Victor? Um, I did do an Aurelia art test. Um, that one was also not used because it was not good enough, which, <laughs> fair enough. Um, but Jess did the new one, uh, Jessica Oyenhart, very, very talented uh, artist, a huge inspiration of mine. She's on the team. 
She did the new Aurelia Splash, which is being used in the game, and that one is gorgeous. Oh, wait. Oh, we're good. The stream, like, buffered on me for a second. Uh, yeah, and so and now it sounds like I did two art tests, which is true. I did one during my internship summer, and I did one when I went back to school, because um, I went back to school for my senior year, and I did one while I was doing my thesis. Let's see here. Uh, Sketchio says, where do we follow Victor if we haven't yet? Yeah, where's the best place you want people to follow you? Um, it kind of depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for League stuff or Splash stuff, ArtStation is going to have your most in-depth posts with high-res images, process, um, thoughts, concept art, all that stuff. If you're looking for sort of day-to-day uh, -day doodles and um, like older sketches, my I guess I don't update my Tumblr anymore, but it has stuff from like two years ago, which is kind of interesting. And then the one I update the most frequently would be Instagram, and that's going to be a combination of like photos of where I'm traveling and um, like daily sketches and stuff like that, as well as Splash stuff. But Splash stuff doesn't look very good on Instagram because it's too small. Blue. Moulin Blue. Uh, Devin Downer says, I love your art. Oh, Tim, I bought your art books last year, and I think... I even kept the box they came in because I can't get myself to get rid of such amazing art. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it's one of those things where I saw someone get, get a box for their... Oh, there's three birds on that chair. <gasps> oh, man. Are they there. kissing? They're making out. <laughs> yeah, that third cute. bird is like, I'm outie. I don't want to be third like, wheel. I got invited to this because I thought there would be more people. <laughs> Wait, but now that homie's left, I've he has a shot. i before. They're so red. Take your shot. Uh, oh, no, they left. Now he's alone. But anyways, I uh, went to a convention and someone else had these custom boxes. So if any of you are looking to make them, it's called packlane.com. And yeah, you can make any size box you want. You can do it in matte or gloss. They're really great. And they're not that expensive for the quantity that you receive. So look into it. And thank you, by the way, for getting my books. Uh, Mazba says, I have a question for Victor. Is he working on the new support champ, Splash? Oh, yes. I wrapped it up the day before um, I came to see Tim, and I'm fairly excited about it. Um, I, think it's, I think it's one of my better ones. Should be good. I mean, I haven't seen it, of course, because of Yeah, uh, I would never show any no. other human because But I can NDA. assume it's really good <laughs> and something that you should look forward to. XKai47 says, on storytelling, where should I start learning from? Is it something more like subjective or are there some other specific things art directors search for? So there's a lot of really good resources on how to learn storytelling, like from books and stuff. Oh, I see the island. Yeah. See, it's right here. Shh, shh. Duh, Tim, come on. This is, a, this is a bold composition I call triangle in the middle of the picture. <laughs> yeah. No, we'll, we'll yeah, you gotta make it, it work. Um, so for storytelling... Um, Wow, I should know these off the top of my head because I've read them a million times. But um, look into, oh my gosh. What's it called? Anything that talks about like the hero's journey is going to talk about like the mm -hmm. structure, like the basic structure of like most uh, Western style stories or just like stories in general. Um, but in terms of visual storytelling and composition, I really like Framed Ink because it talks about camera, composition, uh, values, storytelling, all that stuff. Framed ink. Really Frame good, ink. really good start. Um, <laughs> sorry, you good. But one of my favorite parts about storytelling is that it can be really personal. It's um, if you go out into the world and you live your life to the fullest, that's how you get good stories that you can then tell other people. So one of the problems you kind of run into with some student artists is that they're phenomenal craftspeople, but they've been holed up in their basement for like five years and they don't really have a fresh story to tell because they haven't lived anything. Um, I, only f I only really feel the authority to tell stories that um, in one way or another I've lived. So, hmm. you know, for, for my job, obviously, like I'm not the ruler of a Noxian nation, so I, I can't say firsthand what that's like, <laughs> but I can, uh, you know, I can watch TV, I can, like, look for that character in other places, um, and I, I do still try to act out a lot of the stuff that I end up painting, just to see how it feels. Today I want to paint a giant man who's an island, be 
who's lounging in the ocean because I want to lounge. I feel like lounging. And so I feel like I know pretty well what that should feel like and what that should look like. Um, but yeah, that's what my favorite part about storytelling is like, if you go out into the world and you have adventures, then that's how you get all the sauce. And then the structure <laughs> you can learn from books. There's a lot of good resources, but I'm sure you can Google that stuff too. I'm curious to see where you go with this concept. Uh, I'm I'm gonna be honest. It's it's remarkably difficult to paint and, and answer talk. questions at the same time. But I'm sure you knew that, Tim. Which is why you, well, you know, sabotaged so me. I've gotten so comfortable with I've it. I've gotten used but to like, it. I've been doing this for six years. You know. Yeah. So uh, I'm like every time I, I see you, like put the pen down and start talking. I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah, you kind of need to still, yeah. So this might suck, but I'll try my best. I believe in you. Okay. Well, the thing, that's all I need. The thing that's different with Victor is he's a much faster artist than I am. So if I I'm, think he'll if be I'm able to focused, knock this out. If I'm focused. Well, if there's some of these where I feel like I can knock them out quickly, I got you. Whoop. Whoops, sorry. Thank you. Bits. Give me the oh, bits. Nine for fu- or for, oh, it's cheering. All right, now you're good again. Sick. All right, I'm going to practice my multitasking. Okay, are you ready for this then? Yeah. Okay. While drawing, <laughs> on storytelling, where, oh no, never mind, I got that. Gonza asked, was it hard for you getting into Riot and how was the process? Um, yes. Oh God, this is hard. <laughs> yeah. Immediately picks up the pen. No pen. Okay. <laughs> yes and no. Um, my, oh wow. Okay. Let's see. It's so hard. Uh, my roommate, Evan was interning there at the time. So he's the one who got my foot in the door. I wasn't initially interested in going to Riot at all. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, I'd never heard of League of Legends. It was sort of this obnoxious, like, loud game that my roommates would play while I was trying to work. And I was like, you guys aren't going to get jobs, and this is stupid, and video games are stupid, and I don't understand what's going on, and all the characters look look really bad. Um, But then I visit Riot, and it's sort of right when they're in the middle of revamping their whole catalog of characters and the map. This is when they redid the, the map. Uh, and when they hired just a ton of all-star artists um, all at once. So I, I go to visit them at that time, uh, at that turning point, And I'm just like blown away by the roster of people they're hiring, like all my childhood heroes. Um, and by sort of the new art direction that the game is taking where they're trying to become legit. Like, it started off as this Dota mod where um, people were just doing this as, like, a a passion project, and the gameplay was there, and the community was there, but the visuals were terrible. And then once they had a little bit of money, they're like, okay, we we really want to make this game look good. So once I realized that that was their mission and that they had hired literally all the people I'd ever want to work with, I was like, okay, you know, I took interest, and I was like, shit, like, can I work here? Um, And I showed my portfolio, and um, they're like, yeah, man, this work is sick, like, this is pretty cool, like, we definitely think we could at least, like, give you an internship or something, do you play the game? And I was like, no, I've never played, and they're like, we'll see you next year, and I was like, okay. Um, So I had to take a year to to learn the game, because that's that's one of the things that Riot Games is, um, you, you need to be a gamer, you need to play the game to understand and empathize with gamers and be a hardcore gamer yourself. So I downloaded the game and I was so, so bad at it forever. Um, But I played it anyway, played with my friends and came back the following year and got my internship. Did my summer internship, it was really hard and I sucked and I made Aurelia and it was bad, but I learned a lot. Then I went back to school for my senior year Man, I can't do this. No, I can. I can, actually. Can. I can. I absolutely can. It's so easy. This is the easiest thing ever. Um, Went back to school, did another art test. And then the hard part when you're trying to get into Riot is waiting because I had about nine months of them saying, yeah, man, there's like a 90% chance we're going to hire you. And I'm like, that sounds really nice, but also I would love 100%. (laughs) Um, And it's just kind of the... Not the bureaucracy, but, um, you know, we're kind of scatterbrained and all over the place, and it takes a million years to hire anyone. Um, so that was a little bit nerve-wracking, but I eventually made it in, and it was all good. 
You're doing fantastic, by the way. <laughs> Talking and drawing. Oh, God. I know you get used to it after a while where I think you start, like, rambling while you're drawing. Just so yeah. that you don't have to, like, get into a new question or your brain can just stay in that realm and, like, right, yeah, right, I can right. talk for a half hour about this. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the hang of it. Right. And then if I don't answer the question, I'm trusting Tim to be an awesome moderator and be like, look, Vic, you just said a bunch of nonsense, but the question was blank. <laughs> so I'm ready for that. Too. I don't think I can be in a position to do that knowing how often I do that. <laughs> it's like at least once per stream I have this tangent that just goes. And then Sean, I think, is too nice to stop me. He's just like, here he goes. God bless him. <laughs> Uh, Devin Downer says, it's so interesting that you have to play it, but it definitely makes sense. Yeah, like the more that I think about it, yeah, I guess that it pays does off. make sense. It pays you off. You shouldn't play it. Um, especially when you look at our mission statement, which is to be, Riot is like extremely player focused. Like everything we do um, is with players in mind. We want them to have the coolest, most awesome experience possible because we believe they're the reason we're here. Um, but also because, um, oh shit. <laughs> there we go there we go but also because we're gamers ourselves so we're like okay what's the game that we would want to play and we're in the position to make that game so it kind of makes sense i guess just a question from me so is this normally a process you would take are you literally like finding areas of interest and then letting your brain be like okay how should i attack this and like piques your curiosity. Um, so if I wasn't doing a stream, I could do this way more loosey-goosey and exploratory, which is really fun. You just like set aside an afternoon, no responsibilities, and you just go in and you just play with something, like like finding images out of clouds. In this case, since I knew I was going to be on stream, um, I did try to at least visualize what this could be in my head. I think visualization, as most of you know, is a very powerful tool for... Uh, making things um, not not like fast or, well, basically it allows you to, if you have a goal, you're much more likely to hit your goal than if you're like sort of grasping at straws, which again, like I, I have no problem doing. It's just like in this context, I, I want it to actually look like something. Otherwise you guys are just gonna be really confused why I have a job. Mm -hmm. um, so in this case, I did think about it. I want it to be a man lounging, a merman lounging, and have his tail feel like kind of a foreground mountain, um, and have his, the tip of his tail feel like this really cool like structure uh, coming out in the front yeah. here. So I've thought about the sense of space. I know what I want, like, you know, foreground, medium, background. Uh, in fact, I might shrink this fool a little bit. I think that'll add a little bit of depth and interest and make him feel more... Um, like yeah. an island, but so but I thought about that, and then I thought about like generally my my color scheme that I would want. Um, I thought about how I want to pop out his head with the lightest value, which is going to be these clouds, and then I want to have the clouds not be anywhere else in the composition. Maybe I'll have mm. like one that's like balancing it out over here, something like that. So I've thought about a couple things while preparing for this stream, but I'm still allowing myself the fun um, of discovery and the pleasure of just like sort of messing around with it. Uh, Sketchio says, I'm so enjoying the stream and it just started. Just saying, LOL. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, Koki9 says, uh, I'm assuming you mean you recommend iPad Pros for digital art? I do. Wait, is there a question there? Uh, I guess it's, do you recommend iPad Pros for digital art? Um, I haven't gotten the hang of it yet, but I've, a lot of my friends have had tremendous success with it. Um, it's a very, very powerful tool. The only thing that's missing for me, like one of my favorite things in Photoshop is the liquify tool right here, mm -hmm. which they don't have yet. So well, thank you, what do we TM got? What do we got? Myogenic for following. Nice. Yeah, I love, love, love the liquify tool, um, especially when my shapes are feeling boring and stiff. I love just like kind of messing with them. In this case, I have a pretty clear idea of what I want my shapes to be, but when I'm in full exploration mode, like, I'll really just... <laughs> that's not very strong at all. Where's the strength? I mine's super low. That's, that's okay. I think there's, like, a strength setting somewhere. Maybe pressure? I think it's pressure. Yeah, well, you can really get in there and mess with stuff. Um, See, so yeah, I, even, I, mean, I even start to like some of this stuff where maybe... 
this foreground stuff can feel really big. Um, so that's why I like using Photoshop, but the iPad, if you're like sketching, drawing, um, messing around, totally, totally good. James Jean does like finished pieces on the iPad, I don't know how, same with Yana Shermer. Um, so it's definitely like a, a valid tool. I'm just kind of waiting on the last bells and whistles before I make the plunge. I, I like this actually. Liquify for life. <laughs> uh, Devin says, is this drawing for a mermaid? It kind of looks like a mermaid to me. It yeah, is. it's a merman. Merman. Um, I did a mermaid yesterday, so I, f I figured I'd, I'd give a shout-out to the men today. Also, when you're working fast, it's really hard to make something beautiful. Um, it's, it's a big struggle for me to make something beautiful. I... Man, Matt Rhodes, I don't know if you guys know Matt Rhodes, you should check yes. out his work. He dropped a quote yeah, like a couple right weeks now. ago, totally wrecked me. Right, um, type it in there really quick. Matt, Matt Rhodes. Rhodes yeah. He said, um, I don't know if he said this or his mom said this or something, but he was like, it's really easy to make something ugly and it's really hard to make something beautiful. And that cut me to my core because I'm really good at making <laughs> ugly things very fast, but I almost never make beautiful things. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> so that's why I like drawing dudes is because dudes can be beautiful even when they're sort of ugly or, or not perfect. Yeah. Whereas uh, like girls and women, like you have to nail it. You know, you have to nail that, that essential beauty. Otherwise it just looks wrong. Um, and it's very hard to do on a, on a tight uh, timeline. Um, Ellis says, Victor's voice is really calming, and I don't know why. I've gotten that before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, yeah, man. does it him... It's freaking out. Oh, you know what? Here, I think it's because touch is on. Okay, okay. Not thank trying. you, thank you. Hopefully that was the reason. Um, I am talking softer than usual because my voice is sore. I think I have some slight laryngitis, but um, I have gotten that before. And it's also my way of calming myself down when I'm doing public speaking is I have to pace myself and speak very softly. I think the, the um, what's it called? What's the word? The inclination would be to speak faster, to sound like you have a lot to say or something, uh, but then you trip mm. over your own words and it's a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> uh, X guy is asking, have you ever worked on any other games or companies before Riot? Yes, I snuck in a... Uh, concept push at Wizards of the Coast right before Riot. Like, literally, the really? th yeah, th it was three weeks before Riot. I had already accepted the job offer. Um, but I went to Spectrum and ran into Richard Witters, who's the art director on Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, and um, the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs. And so he looked at my portfolio, specifically my recent Little Prince stuff. And he offered me a gig doing uh, D and D concept push, and I was like, "Are you kidding me?" Like, um, so I couldn't turn that down. Like, I had to go do it. I'm sure I asked for permission, but even if they had said no, I would have done it because <laughs> you, you can't stop me. Um, and that was, oh my gosh, that was like the most fun I've ever had. It was just three weeks. I would wake up, cross the street from the hotel, go to Wizards, paint from nine in the morning to six at night, heads down, headphones on like, you know, dozens of drawings every day. I was so productive, I was so in the zone, I was learning a ton. I was really, really inspired by the concept art on the walls. They had like Tyler Jacobson stuff and Kieran Yanner and, and um, Chris Ron, like all my heroes basically. Um, some like magic stuff uh, across the building from the D&D &D stuff. And I was like looking at that stuff and I was like, oh, I gotta get good, I gotta make good shit. Plus like for me like that, that's probably the closest thing to a dream job you're ever going to get is doing concept work for D&D because &D, it's, it's like the what-if game. It's the storytelling game um, where you're like, okay, if I was doing a D&D &D campaign, like what weird shit do I want to run into? Um, it was a total blast. I, I would love to do that again sometime. You know, I, you may be able to find it's like little Easter eggs on Victor's Instagram, but dinosaur is your hint. <laughs> Oh yeah, it was a lot of dinos. Uh, the expansion is out now. It was it was Tomb of Annihilation, which is a revamp of Tomb of Horrors from back in the day. Um, and um, yeah, I worked a lot on the the dinos and the albino dwarves. That was my shit. 
Um, Sketcher says, whispering to Victor to make a Nami fan art for Mermaid that Riot will eventually launch. Oh my gosh. I am very sorry to say that I don't care about Nami at all. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, don't spread that because I work with Jim. Oh, wait. She's the one who designed Nami. And uh, she's. Wait, Jen. She, Jem. Jem, oh, Jem. Jem Lim. Amazing, phenomenal concept artist. There you go. So she's the one to ask for that kind of stuff. I um I'm gonna tweet her right now. I like the I like the monsters and the dudes, you know. <laughs> that's that's me. Uh Spectre 4 says there is a liquify tool just trying more apps. I recommend Art Studio Pro for it. Ooh. Oh, I log is that on the iPad too? I'll have to try it. <coughs> Pardon me. Um Jonathan has a long question. Ooh. Well, he says, I have a long question for Victor. So, of course, while working at Riot, you've left your mark on countless illustrations and champions. However, for you personally, from where do you derive the most satisfaction? And, related, do you feel like you own the artwork you create over there? Since so much of the Splash artwork seems like a team effort, how does the collaboration dynamic affect how you feel about the work you do? Okay, that's a good, good question. That is a good question. Um, let's break it down. Can you break it down for me, Tim? Oh, sick. Oh, so I don't know. There was a better break it down. No, no. I mean, like, uh, the question? there was multiple parts to that. Okay. So the first question that I can gather is, for you personally, because you've worked on countless illustrations and champions, where do you derive the most satisfaction? Okay. I, in the context of Riot, what I love doing most is freaking nailing the problem space. That sounds kind of boring, but what that means is, they hand me a concept, they hand me a new character or an old character to rework, and we have very, very, very specific goals for that character. Uh, we want it to feel a certain way. And the reason I chose um, sort of video games as a, as a job or as a career is I enjoy, as much as drawing randomly, I enjoy problem solving. I really enjoy problem solving. I like figuring out what is the best possible solution visually to match this narrative, to match this character, to match this gameplay, to match this overall experience. And so that becomes less about um, sometimes my personal voice and more about finding the right puzzle piece for the job. Um, and I get tremendous satisfaction out of finding um, the right solution and maybe an unexpected solution too, like something people haven't seen yet because it's such a saturated market. Like, we have 140 characters who all essentially are the main character and all fight and all are all super powerful and all that shit. So it's like, how do I make them distinct? How do I make them stand out? How do I make them iconic and unique? Um, it's really inspiring to see stuff like Overwatch, um, where you feel like there's these really, uh, really, really catchy, iconic characters that people really learn to love. And I think... Um, that's something I strive for as well, is... Um, I was say, don't you feel that with the Riot characters? That yeah. people have that connection? Okay. <clears throat> but what you have to realize is, like, that's only going to happen if I do my job correctly, right? If, uh, I f if I phone it in, if I just do some generic splash of my character, you know, kicking and punching the screen, it's not going to feel like a, like a person that you want to play, that you want to associate with, that you want to identify with uh, and play 100 games of League with. But if I really nail it, then it's going to capture what it feels like to play that character for you in your head, in your imagination. And you're going to come back over and over and over again. Um, so I think that's the first part of the question. Second part, do you feel like you own the artwork you create? Since much of it seems like a team effort, how does a collaboration dynamic affect how you feel about the work you do? So it depends. Um, some stuff is more collaborative than others. Um, some pieces, I feel like are, you know, 90% me, 99% me, uh, stuff like Elderwood Hecarim. Um, though I do remember that piece getting, like, some really crucial feedback on the pose, which made it a lot stronger. Um, other pieces are really, really heavily feedbacked and collaborative. And those pieces start to feel less like mine, um, which is totally fine. That's part of the job. Um, but, yeah, during those splashes, it's like, I got to do some personal work or I'm going to go crazy. Why, thank you. Oh, uh, the hearts hit the, the bits pretty hard. I didn't know that. And let's see here. I oh, know that was, that was a two-part question. 
Okay, uh, Danny says, oh, for Tim, quick question. Will this stream be on YouTube? Sorry if it's been asked already. I had to leave for a bit. It will be. Yeah, I will hopefully be putting it up tomorrow. So if you miss any part of it, you can catch it again in the replay. One Invictus 00 says, I have a quick question for Victor. Did you work on the Annie rework? If so, how much? Um, I was not even aware Annie had been reworked. <laughs> so no, I have not worked on that. It's like news to Victor. That must have been a while back. Uh, another question for me. So then where you're at right now, how do you feel of where it's taken you and where you're going to go? Because I feel like I get to this point a lot where I'm always looking at it and like questioning things. So. Oh, this piece? Well, I'm doing what you should <clears throat> almost never do if you're trying to finish a piece, which is I'm noodling. Uh, it's a form of panicking where you want to mm. look like you're doing something productive. But really, what have I done in the last two steps? Pretty much nothing. Hold on. From here to here, like... Yeah, this doesn't add anything. I'm not really solving for anything. Like, this tail overlapping is kind of interesting, but ever since I liquefied, you lose the read of the tail, which is crucial for it to feel like a mermaid. So I might even go back to this stage, honestly. Um, and then the form rendering is silly because I don't have reference in front of me. Um, so it's just going to feel kind of noodly and bad. Um, so I'm actually going to return. I'm going to return here and go back to the roots and make I'm like some actual oddly decisions. I'm digging the, this green light that you have behind the body yeah no no no, no. Here. oh here Ooh. Which i know it doesn't make sense we could make them glow from within mm. i hadn't planned on it but we could try it i'll try it yeah run with it uh, i trust your intuition um oh um oh yes it's a yes una games basically they're saying what did you work on it at and you make splash arts really you probably just came in he showed his work earlier, but basically on his main website, you can find the, the splashes he's done for Riot. And also you said And on Art Station, Station which has um, like process and, and thoughts and stuff like that. Yeah. It is interesting watching someone do digital. I think I've been surrounded with traditional for so long that I almost forgot how much fun digital can be. It's really fun. It's really free, um, which is sort of a double-edged blade because... Yeah, you can do nothing for a very long time um, and then just like undo it. Whereas traditional forces you to make real decisions, which is cool. <laughs> You're just making fake decisions constantly. Fake has decisions over <laughs> here. Uh, yeah, Sketchio says, yeah, I do like that you can see the whole body and especially his knee. Yeah, exactly. I think that's too important to lose. I got, um, I got very stimulated by the liquefy pass which is bound to happen um in digital a lot yeah you, you make all these random decisions and your brain is like is eating them up like candy like every time you change something <laughs> it feels so exciting you're like oh my god it's changing it must be getting better or getting finished that's not how art works like you need to have thoughtful <laughs> um decisions that lead to your final vision which is what where that visualization comes in um so actually, it might be worth me trying to figure out what the highest value choice I could make right now would be. Um, I think this piece is missing two things. One is his reflection in the water, which is, I was picturing in my head. Oh, and yeah. two is like a better drawing of his torso. So then I can work on top of that. So I'm going to try that. Uh, Yasuna Game says, why wow, you did the splash for Swain, many kudos. I appreciate that. Um, Swain was one of the funnest <clears throat> and most involved projects I've ever worked on. Um, I involved myself in the concepting of that character as well as the splash. Like early on I saw it taking form and I got so excited by it that I was like, guys, um, I have thoughts on the portrait, I have thoughts on the design, I have thoughts on the value grouping. Did you um, really? Yeah, and I, I, would, like to, I would like to say that um, so first of all, the concept artist on that one is uh, Justin Albers. I'll type it in the chat. And thank you, Bruno Emanuel SJ, for following. Yeah, Justin Albers and Larry Ray. So props to those dudes. <coughs> but I saw it taking shape, and I got so excited that I was like, guys, 
This guy needs to be uh, black, white, and red, which anybody who's seen Samurai Jack knows that hmm. the entire premise of that show from uh, Gendy Tartakovsky himself is like black and white on red is sort of the visual DNA of, of Samurai Jack. And so that was like a little homage to that show in a way. I mean, not that other characters don't have black, white, and red, but um, so I was like very strict about it because they wanted to introduce midtones or grays or, or sort of dilute his essential contrasts, which is normal because his texture has to read in the context of the game. It's a colorful map, all that stuff. But I, I really push for a more aggressive um, design and value grouping of like really keeping the cape as dark as possible and all the detail to a minimum because I wanted us to have our own Darth Vader. I wanted it to be <laughs> like just his walk and his cape in the wind. Like I, I wanted that to be the character, not some like trim on his lapel or some spikes on his, you know, whatever. I wanted, I wanted him to be a presence. I wanted him to be a force of nature. Um, and I think that actually carried through to the final, which I'm really proud of. Okay, reflection. And while you're doing that, uh, Spectre 4 says, Victor, can you explain a bit on your presses so far? I really like the way you put colors down right away, that at its start, it looked very messy. Ah, uh, yes. Do not be afraid of the mess. <laughs> um, the color thing... Uh, I'm going to say something kind of blasphemous, which is that color doesn't matter, value matters. Um, <coughs> Ooh, what was that excuse little me. shortcut? Uh, control Y. If you do Control Y, what, control what happens y. is um, up here in View Proof Setup, Proof Colors is Control Y. What I did was I went to Proof Setup and I went to um, Cus, whoa, right here. Custom, and then you do out of this menu, you choose dot gain 20%. And now every time I press control Y, I get my values. Oh, and values are much, much more important than color uh, in terms of what you're gonna the viewer is gonna see and interpret. And after that, um, color, as long as you have like proper temperature relationships, you can kind of do whatever you want. And it's a much more oh no, I'm losing my voice, we're not even halfway through. <coughs> color is much more subjective and emotional um, and it should in my opinion should just serve to convey the mood at that point and since I want this to feel like a tropical paradise I'm using these saturated blues and greens um, but yeah I'm, I'm actually thinking about value even though it looks like I'm thinking about color like this color is very ugly I'll fix that that's actually a good point that I think a lot of, at least digital artists, forget. They want to jump into color because it's exciting. I think it adds interest. But really, Victor is right. Like, the fundamentals of value is where your eye will lead. And, yeah, you can do contrast with saturation and hue. But really, our eye is drawn to contrast and value more than the other two, I would argue. Oh, Sammy says maybe have some tea with honey. Oh, where I do. It? I do. I've you been I've out? been chugging tea. Um, tea and soup and... It's not working. Oh. <laughs> That's why I like going on the stream. I was like, okay, Victor. <laughs> yeah. I didn't talk for like you're... six hours in preparation. I can give you more. Really? Thank you. Do you want another watermelon? Uh, sure. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tim. All right. All right I'm going to rest it. Across. I'm going to rest it for like five Girl. minutes. Yeah. Oh, I can think now. Ha <laughs> ha.
Gray says, Victor, easy question, favorite music? Ooh, that is not an easy question at all. Um, I listen to a whole bunch of stuff, but I would be lying if I said that I wasn't obsessed with SZA right now. Oh, oh no. <coughs> SZA, S-Z-A. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. Here, why don't you keep drawing for a second? I'll answer some of these. Nice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ones, yeah. Give me like 10. All right. Ten minutes. Here we go. X Kai forty. Oh, wait till you see me tangent. I can go for I'm ready. hours. I'm ready. X Kai says, "What do you think is the best way to approach fundamentals? I get those are something you should never stop learning, but are there any ways or techniques you should use to learn them?" Uh, so when I was approaching fundamentals in college, I feel like I was too bullheaded and stubborn to apply it to the homework that we were given. I mean, I still would, but I feel like. Take what you learn and apply it to things that you're interested in. Or if you have a story, if you have concepts that you want to work on, then apply the fundamentals to those. I think for so long I was almost like resisting. But then when I started to apply like things about value or um, I was so picky of wanting to start everything in color, but I would I knew the importance of starting with grayscale and why people do it, but I just refused to do it. And then once I started to, I kind of understood why there's an importance to it because then you can see value like what Victor's talking about. And then you can then eventually evolve to a point where when you're even working with color, you can still see the values. And it's something that if I didn't kind of first teach myself how to work in grayscale, I don't think I would have then applied that to the way I work color nowadays. But um, the best way to approach it is to really try to understand them to the best of your ability. I don't think you can just breeze over them and just sideline them as something is not as important. I think it's something that should be in the forefront of most things that you do. And it doesn't matter what medium you're working with. I feel like even with the pencil stuff I do, a lot of it does come back to where is the eye being led. And a lot of it has to do heavily with contrast, especially with the values that you're placing down. If you put down a really dark value next to a light value or there's a really dark 8B pencil just on paper and have that space right butting up against each other, your eye is naturally going to be drawn to that because... As humans, our eyes love contrast and we're drawn to it. So you want to apply these fundamentals in a way that enhances the piece because otherwise I feel like it could detract in, in hopefully not a bad way, but it can steer the viewer's eye into somewhere where you don't want it to go. So you almost want to like give a better roadmap for the viewer when they're looking at your piece. Do, do, do. Uh, Jim says... At this point in making a digital painting, even though I like my idea, I get bored with the process. What can one do to keep the momentum slash interest slash motivation going during the rendering heavy middle? Ooh, uh, this is an interesting one because I love rendering. I think I'm one of those oddballs that I, maybe it's just because it passes time and to me, <laughs> maybe I feel more productive than I actually am, but it's almost like you have to kind of learn to love rendering, but at the same time, what Victor says, acknowledge when it's just noodling. Are you adding anything to the piece while you're rendering, or are you just kind of drawing over what's already there? And you might think you're adding more detail, but my personal tip with digital stuff especially is not to zoom in too close. I think I had a really bad habit during the rendering stage of zooming in to a particular area, especially if I was like, wanting a pocket watch or a coin or a specific piece of jewelry. I would like zoom in and really detail how it would look, but then you zoom out and it gets lost. And that time that you just spent on it seems wasted. And no one's going to have the ability or the feature to zoom in on a digital piece. So why waste your time rendering things at such a small scale that are not going to be seen? And obviously if you're going to do something for a convention that was like a banner or a poster or even for prints if it's going to be printed really large then yeah i think it has a little more sense to detail more than you normally would but when you're doing a piece like what victor is doing right now it's great he's zoomed out he's focusing more on value and placement of contrast rather than how does the face look anatomically or things like that nature or even any details i don't know if he's in, this little mermaid is going to be wearing anything but that would be after the fact of laying down the values and uh, some of the more essential fundamentals first. So if you get bored with this process, 
it's almost like you know yourself best as an artist. And if you want to keep the process as interesting as possible, switch it up. Try a new brush. Try a new technique. Maybe throw in some textures that you normally wouldn't. Uh, mixing it up is huge. But at the same time, I think for an artist, there does come a time where you kind of have to put your head down and grind. And that's something that I think doesn't get talked about enough because nowadays I feel like speed is become the new... How do I word this? It should be the goal to work faster, but I feel like spit painting has confused younger artists into thinking that you can create this beautiful masterpiece in two hours, but what they don't explain is the artists that usually can spit paint really well have spent hours mastering techniques of value and color and lighting, and they, don't, they miss the middle chunk. So they're seeing the end result of all these years of experience, and it's something that I think should be uh, talked about more. And if you feel like you're putting your head down and you're in the grind and you're like, why isn't this getting any better? You're on the right path because that grind and that acknowledgement lets you realize this could be better. And I'm trying to bridge the gap from where I'm at currently to where I see it in my head. But the problem is with artists, we always see things better in our heads than in our execution. And oftentimes we get so frustrated because we always think that it's going to be this amazing, beautiful piece in our head. At least we see it. But then you're not allowing the piece to be experimental or explore it during the process. And literally in this past year, I've allowed my pieces to grow organically. And if there's a decision that kind of strays from the original concept, I'm more allowing of that to happen. And that's something that I think you guys should try as well. Oh man, look how nice this is looking just from, oops, 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 nope. I'm just so going to say, as minutes. soon as I don't have to talk, I'm able to focus and I'm just sol like solving all the problems that I've made. <laughs> it, it, and you did a lot for only four minutes still. So, hey, you got six all more right. minutes. Sick. Let's go. Okay, let's see here. <laughs> Let the man draw. <laughs> <laughs> um, Darcy Babb says, SZA. Oh my God, she's wonderful. SZA. Oh, that's what you were saying. Yeah. SZA. So then I spelled it out. SZA. Really? What do you mean, really? I feel like, do I, is this artist on Instagram? Do I not follow her? It's her music. Timothy. Timothy, you're out of control. Oh my god. Now I'm not focused, and I'm not even the one drawing. I'm moderating, and I lost track. All right, Jim says, by contrast, I love rendering traditionally. I could render for days, as you might. It's the digital part that makes me bored. Okay, so... I definitely share that same problem. Obviously, I do mostly traditional nowadays, but at, watching Victor, and Key has a mermaid on her screen that was just up, and like it's making me want to at least do one digital mermaid piece this month. Uh, the way I look at digital is it's so much more open the tools that are at your disposal, where when you're doing like a pencil and paper, the pencil is your tool, and it's something that is reliable, it's consistent, and it's, some, it's probably the only part of the art itself that you kind of have control of or you can kind of expect a certain result of. With digital, it can go so many different ways. And at any given notice, like you could pull up a liquify filter, like what Victor was saying, and all of a sudden it's kind of a new piece, a new dynamic. But with traditional pencil, it's a little harder to do that unless if you're constantly erasing or you're working light enough or you're having kind of these Bruce Law or loose, broad strokes. But oftentimes with traditional, the more you get into it, the less and less kind of um, variation you can create because you're like slowly kind of solidifying what that concept is. Where with digital, at any given moment, you can really change things up quickly. And I don't think that that's uh, available so much traditional. So maybe your being bored with digital comes with uh, the thought that I could be working faster because I have these tools at my disposal, or at my disposal. disposal, but I don't know which tools to use, or I'm not familiar enough with the software to know how to get that done. And I definitely had that feeling when I was first learning Photoshop. I could tell I was working slower than my friends, and a lot of it was because I was using the basic brushes, 
which I don't think is a bad thing, but not knowing like how to quickly change a blend mode or a layer mode or like using the liquify filter or using the selection tool and like quickly editing a proportion, I would be repainting it like I would traditionally. So once you kind of learn some tips and tricks, it'll definitely make the process go by a little faster, but you should never just rely on those solely. Because even though Victor is a great digital artist, but he's a great digital artist because of his knowledge of fundamentals and things like that. And he's able to use these tools that Photoshop offers in a way to benefit the pre-established knowledge that he brings to the table. Wow, look how much this is changing. <laughs> um, okay, Xkai says... Have you guys seen Infinity War? Or maybe you're not so much into superhero movies. I enjoyed it too much. Uh, Victor saw it with, I believe it was Tyler and Jonas yesterday, two days ago, yesterday. Uh, I opted out, but I'm sure when Victor has his talking time again, he can give you his little <laughs> review of it. Um, I haven't seen a superhero movie in a year and a half, I think. I've taken kind of a stance that I don't want to see superhero movies in the theaters anymore. I think I want to see other movies made, but... After talking with Victor, I realized more and more that rather than focus on like critiquing things that I don't like, I'm going to focus on movies and games that I do enjoy and share why I like them, or even with a superhero movie. I, I used to kind of have the stance, but I think I've become a little more bitter over the years that I keep seeing like one every month be released. It's even with movies that I don't think I'll enjoy, I go into it thinking or trying to find something that I can walk away with. And even with like Frozen, I even though I felt I had some issues with it at the time, I still walked away being impressed with like the snow dynamic, or having uh, like a specific shot that I I can carry with me, and then I'll you know maybe implement into my own art. So I never try to just fully close out and close my mind to the possibility that I can walk away being inspired from something that I go into it thinking I won't be. And I think that's something that hopefully I can continue and like push even more strongly into my future with not only movies, but I guess just life in general. Uh, Thanos demands your silence. <laughs> and they also say, don't spoil it. But yeah, actually, I, I would... Uh, da -da. Uh, Leo says, I feel you so much on that, Tim. And Sketchio says, yeah, same. Uh, to be honest, it's one of those things where... Uh, I actually might do like my top 10 movies of last year on YouTube now that I have more free time now that I don't have a job. And I was thinking maybe I would also do like a top 10 misses or top 10 like worst movies. And I'm like, you know, I'm bringing a lot of negativity to this video that I'd be making. And I don't think it's helping. Like maybe if there's a comedic edge, but at that same time, it's like I want to encourage people to see film and I don't want people to get the wrong impression that I... I'm just like this mega critique of movies because I love movies. It's like the opposite. It's not, I'm not critiquing them because I don't like them. I'm critiquing what could, like the possibility of what movie making can be because I've seen these marvelous movies made. Or you watch something like Spirited Away and you question why aren't there more like this? And that's because I think Spirited Away kind of strays from a formula that most movies enter nowadays because at the end of the day movies are a business and there are producers there's people that invest to make their money back and it's very hard to convince a producer to make this imagine imagine pitching spirited away to a producer nowadays <laughs> at like disney or pixar it'd be Love. very difficult where nowadays i think especially with animation movies it has kind of a simple moral story that they're trying to execute on an hour and a half time frame and like every Pixar movie or most Disney movies can be kind of summed up in like a sentence of what were they exploring and what was resolved um, because of it. But then you have these kind of weird movies. I'm trying to think of the weird one recently, Mother from Darren Aronofsky last year. That It's very hard to sum that one up in a sentence. And I think that's so interpretive and it's so much based on the user's experiences before seeing the movie that has them reflect it and experience it in a different way. I want to see movies like that be made, but obviously it doesn't make a lot of money. I think it gets bad reviews. So I just want to see the film industry to explore as well as make the blockbusters. I'm not saying like cut them out completely because they're entertaining. Sometimes they're an escape for people from reality, but I think you should have both spectrums there. 
Hollowed Artist says, oh, I'm sorry, Chris. I don't know why I said your username. Speaking of games, how did you like God of War? I personally really, really liked it. Um, <laughs> this is another <laughs> thing. I, sh I really should just not do game or movie reviews of the popular ones. And to be honest, I don't think I gave God of War a fair enough chance. I got like three hours into it and then sold it back. I, I played and beat the previous three ones. It was more of like a action adventure hack and slash. And like the first God of War, you're on this boat that's going through a storm and you have to fight Hydra after having relations with these women. And it, it was just so over the top. And like the swinging of the axes, I felt like the, the battle itself was beautiful in the way that he controlled his, I forgot what the chains of chaos or whatever those were called. You can like guillotine them around your body. And I just, I liked the, the look of it. Where this game, the first 10 minutes, you're carrying a log. You have this, your only weapon is an axe, and you can either throw it or get it back. And it does feel good, like that action, but to lose the beauty that I thought the old games had, that I think Heavenly Sword had as well. It has kind of this beauty to the, the, the art of fighting, if you want to call it that, where I felt this axe was more, more blunt. And um, the story... Like I said, I don't think I gave it a fair enough chance. I wasn't really digging what I was playing so far, but I don't think it's fair for me to critique and assess a game that I only poured three hours into because I'm sure the experience is, is much, much longer. Uh, Jim says, dude, do a movie talk podcast. Leo says, yes, do movie talks. I think I will. I honestly, I love movies. I try to watch a new one every day. It's a little different this week because we have visitors and... Um, but last week I watched a few new ones, and uh, if you guys are into old movies, I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's black and white, but it's called Stage Door. It's the most quippy movie I think I've seen in a very, very long time since I've seen like a, a Mae West movie, and the first 10 minutes were just these bunch of women living in a house, and their conversations with each other were just one-upping one another in how quippy or how witty they could be, and I'm like, what is this i remember what like i was drawing something and they were having such good digs but they were smart they weren't hateful digs they were just clever and they were just going back and forth and i always argue with people to watch older movies because they didn't have fancy techniques they only had writing and yeah you could have like good camera shots but they did not have what we have nowadays with like the slow panning or um contrast with color or depth of field like they really relied on their storytelling abilities and a lot of that came down to this quick writing and i don't think you get that now often at all with movies i think it's very <laughs> simplified and easy for the viewer to digest so i would give it a, a check out it's called stage door uh sammy says i watched mother with a friend and was basically gripping him the whole time out of fear and what the swear word <laughs> uh yeah i will i could definitely do a review on mother because i did a 11 page um review of mother i had a very deep experience with it and hearing other people's experiences with it was so different than my own that those are the movies that i really fall in love with because then it's not uniformly catered to anyone but it's uniquely for everyone and uh, my experience of it was uh what the effects of fame can have on a person and then like Sean watched it and it was what alcoholism or what an addiction can do. And then uh, my friend Deandra watched it and it was um, being in an unhealthy one-sided relationship. And like everyone, I've, and then obviously the one that was supposed to be the story was a religious one. It was supposed to be a metaphor for Adam and Eve and the creation of earth and Jennifer Lawrence was earth and Javier Bardem was God and it was supposed to be the relationship between them. But I didn't get that at all the first time I watched it. And I didn't even know that going into the movie. But then I was talking with the people that I went to go see it with. They're like, oh, yeah, the the connections were really easy to point out. And they were talking. And I'm like, did we watch the same movie? Like, I just had this euphoria the entire time about how fame can destroy you. And it was uh, being an artist specifically and where you take inspiration from, especially when he was so attracted to what was wrong around him. And he would like cater to it because then he would use that in his writing and i'm like oh my god how many artists take things that are bad in our life or heartbreak or whatever it is and then use it as creative fuel for your own work so i don't want to i don't want to give too much of my interpretation away because i want you to experience it 
uniquely however you do. I, I feel like I've already said too much. But uh, yeah, I definitely recommend Mother. That was my favorite movie of last year. Um, Chris says, I can understand those reasons as the game goes on, it gets much better and the actions get crazier. The one thing that I did miss that I didn't even know about was, uh, Morbacher was telling me how Kratos will tell stories to his son while they're on a boat. Did you know this? Mm -mm. So he tells stories to his son while they like go from checkpoint to checkpoint or something. And the stories are really simplified versions of stories we already know. So he'll tell like the tortoise and the hare, but he says it of matter of factly. So it'll be like the tortoise raced a hare. The hare was impulsive and couldn't like he would say it in this really like matter of fact way. And he's like, in the end, the tortoise wins. And then the kids are like, you're horrible at storytelling. And apparently every time they're on a boat, he retells one of these children's stories, but in such a blank, dry way. Like to me, that's funny. That's a really great side moment that like takes you out of the game and like sees them as real people where I wish I would have gotten there. Cause up until that point I was like, I, I don't, I'm not buying any of this. Um, I know I don't want to take, I know this is supposed to be like your talking time. I'm just going though. No, Tell funny. me when you're ready to talk again and then I'll, 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 I'll shut up. I'll take a potty break and then I can talk again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is looking great by the way. Wait, do not leave it on that note. No, what? Okay. <laughs> On the stream, it's going to be, like, yeah, super small. Touch on. Touch there you go. Off. There you go. All right, you take your bath and break. I'll just keep going here. Uh, x Kai, or sorry, Sketchio says, writing is missing so much nowadays. I agree. I wish there was more of a... It's so focused on, like, rising action, cli climax, falling action, and conclusion, where all of a sudden you watch European movies that really, like, disregard that whole formula... Uh, one of them was like two days or three nights. I think it was two days and three nights. But it like just did away with any formula. And to me, it was really slow. And I think in, and afterwards, I realized it's because I'm so, I'm, I'm so, what's a good word? Used to the American movie making where you expect a certain up and down. Or even, I guess, last year, it was Call Me By Your Name. And you like expect certain plot points to happen of when they meet and the disagreement and when they fall back in love and they like they kind of hit the similar notes that every romantic comedy or every romantic drama really has but it didn't have that in the first like hour of the movie you're like are they even in a relationship like is there something developing here and those type of movies i find more intriguing because they don't follow a formula it's something unexpected you don't know what's going to happen next uh, annihilation i watched er earlier this year Great movie. I had no idea where it was going. And not only did the visuals like draw me in, but the story was so mysterious. I had no idea where it was going. And that engaged me enough where the movie wasn't just me being entertained. It was me having an experience. Have you seen Annihilation? Yeah. Yeah. That was the same experience I had with Mother where I was so absorbed into what was happening next is I had no idea where it was going. Hmm. And I didn't see a trailer going into this movie either. So I was just blindsided same oh really it fell it fell a tiny bit short for me at the end but the ride was really fun yeah then it becomes more of an experience da, da, da. uh sketchio says or sorry i keep skipping x guy says 11 pages wow now i really want to that movie talks podcast i'd probably bring one of my friends deandra up for it too she's a really big movie person too and i think her and i can go back and forth on mother we did, because I called her at like 1 a.m. immediately. We just talked for like an hour about our interpretations. Um, oh, wait. Could you really quick? Hold on. Yeah, yeah, you got it. I feel bad. Thank you for whoever just followed. I should have it like that. Okay, you're good. Okay, okay. I'm going to make this beside and give him a big old beard. Yeah. I like how this turned out, Victor. <laughs> good God. Are you fast? When you're focused, you are fast. Yeah, but when I'm multitasking, I'm garbo. <laughs> uh, let's see here Sketchio says I really like that about Mother it has so many different views especially if you're an artist I couldn't agree more Sammy says I would love to hear your full review sometime I, you know what maybe I will post on YouTube I'll do like a spoiler thing beforehand of like hey if you haven't seen the movie please watch it before watching this because I think then my view will give you kind of a skewed bias while you're watching it and you'll look for things that I talked about rather than forming your own conclusions I think that's that's very important for me of why I don't 
especially trailers nowadays too. I try to avoid trailers of movies that I want to see, but especially reviews. I, I need to experience it for myself without having someone's other opinion affect the way I view it. Uh, TM Myogenic says, how important is it to have the correct brushes for drawing that Victor is doing right now? Um, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the brush question is kind of a meme in the industry. Um, brushes won't do anything for you that um, learning how to draw will. Um, obviously, like you will, you will develop your preferences for brushes, which is totally normal and, and valid. And I feel extremely comfortable, for instance, on the Zadig brush. But the hard mm -hmm. round with opacity um, is my second favorite, so I can paint on that. This one, like I like, because it it gives me like some residual textures when I erase out. But if I'm doing stuff for work, like I can't really have those. So then I need. Uh, different effects, maybe I'll just use the gradient brush or the round brush, and um, it forces you to think about how to control your edges, values, drawing, shape, all that stuff. Like, you need, you need to be doing that stuff consciously anyway, so the, the brush is just per is purely personal preference. Agreed. Um, I'm going to weigh in on you guys' movie conversation. <laughs> well, I've that's been... right. First, what was your opinion on Avengers Infinity? Um, so Avengers <laughs> Infinity like... War is one of the best Marvel movies I've seen, but it's still a Marvel movie. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It, it's utterly incredible and out of control, the, like the level of quality those movies have gotten to in terms of costuming, set design, the acting roster is incredible um, for the most part. But at the end of the day, it's the same formula. It's the same thing. Nothing wrong with that. A lot of movies are the same formula, and, and stories are stories. But it's, yeah, it's, it's just a really good Marvel movie. If you don't like Marvel movies, you're not going to like it. <laughs> um, and, but it's one of the better ones. Uh, I used to get into arguments all the time specifically about Marvel movies. And the conclusion that I came to that I agree with them, for them, it's an entertaining popcorn flick where we, it got to the point where uh, we were arguing about how I like movies that make you think or question your own choices in your life or make you reflect on something personal based on what was seen on the screen. But they were saying, for them, it's, they like to turn their brain off. And they're just like on a roller coaster and they're just enjoying a ride. And I guess I can respect that now. I, three years ago, whole different perspective <laughs> on my critiquing. But I think nowadays, I definitely can appreciate that, hey, if a movie entertains someone, even if I didn't experience it, it still entertained them. And in a way, it did their job. But then I want movies that are catered to people like me. I don't want to say like the snobbish crowd, but, you know, people that want... It's not, yeah, it's not snobbish. It's nothing like that. You kind of hit the nail on the head, which is people go into things for different reasons. Um, it's sort of a failure of, uh, oh, what do we got? Thank Bjorn you, Bjorn Hurry. Oh, my God. I feel like I know who that is. I've heard that name. Really? Bjorn Huri. I think he's a really good artist. Here you keep dialing. All right, all right. Um, but the, the problem is actually semantics where we're using the same word for a different experience. So movie yeah. or film, right? Some people, like Tim oh, said. You're great. Yeah, Bjorn is kind of a powerhouse. <laughs> so congrats. <gasps> yeah, that piece fucking rules, by the way. Oh, Bjorn. I, you won't be able to see this. <laughs> I don't know why. There it is. Yeah, the little spirit. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I recognize that name. Um, so we're using the same word for a different experience. Someone is going into a movie at the end of a long day. They don't want to think. They've been thinking all day. They don't give a shit. They just want to see mm -hmm. some hot people punch into each other. That's their prerogative. Um, and then some people, yeah, like Tim, really want to be challenged um, and want to think and want to see and want to explore new topics. Um, also extremely valid. So... It's not snobby, it's not elitism, it's not, none of that. It's just um, you don't judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, right? It's all about <laughs> what you're going into it for. And it's the same thing for everything. You can only measure success based on goals, based on your goals, right? To an, and yeah. this is warped because the audience for a movie is going to be every type of person. So that's where people like think they disagree. They're like, 
oh, well, I totally didn't get that out of it, or this movie was stupid, or something like that. And it's like, well, the, the, if, the, if you didn't like the movie, it probably wasn't for you. I mean, it, it, could, it, it could very well be a bad movie, right? But um, it's more interesting and maybe more fair to judge the movie based on what it was trying to do. If it was trying to entertain people, and it did, like you said, mm-hmm. it was successful on some axis. It didn't inter- entertain you, but that's because you know yourself, and you know that you're not going to get entertained by that kind of thing. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it, too. Um, I think, too, like when I was younger, I was extremely critical of things I didn't like because I was afraid that that's what everybody else liked. And I was like, how can people like something so stupid, so mindless, um, so so free, so candy? Um, yeah. But really, the, the proper way to counteract that fear is not to hate on that thing. That's not, that's not going to change anyone's mind, actually. Uh, the way to counteract that, like Tim said, is to share what you love. Because our culture, our society, and our world is an average. It's an average of everyone who lives in it. And we're all in this together, actually. And the way that we steer culture and that we steer taste, that we steer stories, is to add what we love to the mix. Not to, sub- not to try to detract from the things we dislike. Um, because no one's yeah. going to no respond to that. Um, it's it's just not in our nature. I feel like Victor's giving me like reassuring. I I if you guys ever have a moment, you should befriend Victor. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he shares philosophies and things on life that's like, yeah, it gives you a fresh take on life on why sharing positivity is so much more important than sharing negativity. I know that's a really simple way to like right. sum up what you've given me the past few days. But I feel like even you've just opened my mind up to, it's like a reminder. I don't want to say to be a good person. That sounds so simple. <laughs> no, but it's, it's true. Like, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid that um, good movies are ever going to go away. The fact that you care about them and that you want more of them in the world means that there will be more of them in the world. Like, you are the reason that they will continue existing. Um, and the fact that other people are going to go see Transformers 19 doesn't detract from that. It, it, um, it's not a zero-sum game. It can really feel that way. I, I totally understand that it can feel like for every Transformers movie, that means we're missing out on a Miyazaki movie or something like that. Um, but yeah. it, it's kind of not. Uh, it's not very helpful to think that way, I don't think, in the long run. Uh. Sketcher says, amen to that, Victor. Amen. And Gonzo says, can I marry Victor? Oh, my God. He's already kind of I'm already married. married. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to my beautiful wife, Jamie Sharpstein, <laughs> and my son, Mark. He's not... He's a dog. He's a furry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait. One second. I miss. Okay, go. Okay. Uh, Sammy says, I just... Oh, pfft. wait. Oh, stop. Wait, really quick. I'm going to say this and then... Uh, Yan says, oh man, we have a directing module in college and the lecturer hates mainstream cinema and all we do is like old French, no offense, avant-garde cinema and I miss Americans blockbusters so much. I think it's good to have both. Like it's a spectrum. Also like more interesting than liking or hating anything is understanding why. That, Mm -hmm. oh my God, I love getting to the why of things, almost to the detriment of the things themselves. Like sometimes I'll even go into stuff that's like really stupid or ugly that no one gives a shit about just because I want to understand why it's stupid and shitty and ugly. You know what I mean? Like I'm more fascinated by the fact that we have these building blocks to play with and the fact that they literally control people's psychology and the way people think about things more so than the thing itself (laughs) sometimes, you know? Oh yeah. Um, and then the, the stuff that I really love is the stuff that um, turns off my thinking brain and just takes me for a ride, whether I want to or not. Because I'm so hardwired to analyze and, and dissect things and understand, oh, like, what decisions are they making and how does that influence how I'm experiencing the story? And then sometimes the story is just like, shh, turn off brain, <laughs> here's some shit you didn't expect. And I'm just like, whoa, but it's so rare nowadays. That's true. And I think it's good not to go into a movie with a chip on your shoulder of like, since it's a Marvel movie, I'm going to hate it. And I'm going to yeah, look for things that. that I'm going to talk crap about. Because I definitely, I think I got to that point. Spoiler alert, if you think you're going to hate something, you will oh. hate it. Your your brain is, is so much more suggestible than you think it is. And your frame of mind 
is your reality. Um, if you go into it and you think you're going to love it with every fiber of your being, you will find things to love. And if you think you're going to hate it, you will find things to hate. It's a great way to look. Yeah. And the most disappointing thing is when you go in to a movie wanting to love it, and then and you leave like yeah. slightly wounded. But that's expectations, baby. You got to manage your expectations. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sammy says, I just watched Call Me By Your Name recently, and I agree with you 100%. That's why I love books written by Murakami. Oh, Murakami is amazing. Have you ever read any Murakami? No. I mean, I saw Call Me By Your Name, but I didn't, I don't know anything else about him. That dude, like, it's like a good artist, right? They just show you the world in a way you never expected was possible with the seven primary colors. Murakami's like, you know, I'm still using words, but when you're just like, oh. (laughs) Oh, it's a boat. This is a boat. Yeah. What do you think it was? The other part of his fin. That doesn't make any sense, Tim. (laughs) How bad is this drawing that you thought? No, just kidding. <laughs> oh, I like that. It's a little boat. In fact, it's two boats. <gasps> Y'all ready for this? It's the name of the piece. <laughs> two boats by just, Victor Mari. It's just two boats. <laughs> just two brothers. All right, I got to do a scroll down because okay. then it'll automatically. You're good. Cool, cool. <clears throat> Spectre says, Victor, you can't use textured brushes when working in a company. Uh, that's not what I meant. I'm sorry. That was misleading. Um, for splash specifically, part of the splash style is that you don't leave any visible brush strokes. A rule I've famously broken a million times because <laughs> anarchy. But um, <laughs> such a it's, rebel. It's sort of part of our house style is that we want it to feel polished, and so it's not like we can't have texture, but the texture needs to feel um, resolved, and even if it's mm. hand painted, it needs to look. Uh, almost photographic it kind of depends but um you know as long as it looks good at the size people are going to see it you can do whatever you want i like that you added the beard i think that added a really nice touch yeah it needed because it needed a value breakup it was like this pink blob man like this is just meat this just looks like meat <laughs> like a pig with a fish tail and uh, as soon as you add the hair it gives them a relationship to the clouds it gives them um, sort of a value breakdown on his face, right? Yeah. Where there's multiple things going on. Um, it could even be better resolved, but here we are. <laughs> uh, Lights and Seas says, I don't know why I keep saying that. Jim, anyone seen the movie Heartbeats by Xavier Dolan? I love the style. No, but, um, Mommy, not Darren's, um, but a different one. Mommy was my favorite movie the year before. And that movie blew me away. That character development was amazing. And his directing style is very character-centric to the point where you don't even know if you're watching a movie or a documentary. Like, yeah, it gets to that That's level cool. of realness. And kudos to both the director and the actors, but I have not seen Heartbeats. I'm trying to like watch only one of his movies every year rather than just like spin them out in a weekend because I had such a good experience with Mummy. And then I think I watched um, Lawrence Always, I think it was called. And then Tom at the farm. So I think I have a few more that I still have to watch, but I'm trying to like space them out more. Uh, Sharatha says, or wait, uh, sorry, Gonza says, also tell Victor to start streaming too. He does Oof. have a job though. I've thought about it. Um, oh, I, have you really? I think it would be really fun. Um, problem is my job is very taxing. I mean, everyone's job is very taxing. And at the end of a long day, I, I kind of just want to kick it with Jamie. Um, But, you know, I've started sketching on, like, Tuesday nights, and hopefully I can sketch maybe a little bit more often than that, like, other nights of the week. And if I do, I would would totally be down to stream, although I've demonstrated here that I'm terrible at multitasking. And so my engagement with the community would be at a minimum. So at first, maybe it would be more like a spectator sport where you guys can just creep on me drawing. Um... But yeah, I really need to focus when I'm, even when I'm doing like silly silly sketching like (laughs) this, you know. Um, But I'm not opposed to the idea. (laughs) Sharpa says, I know that I will rewatch the stream at least 10 times. (laughs) Oh God. Uh, Leo says, Victor, did you ever doubt that art was the way to go for you? Actually, I'm kind of curious to hear this answer. That's that's a good question. Um, No. The only thing I doubted was whether I could make it a career. Um, I was born in a little village in France and I would have never, thank you. I'm talking so (laughs) softly. I'm talking so softly. 
Um, I would have never guessed that you could do it as a as a career. Um, my first, it, I'm sure everyone like has similar stories where it's like the the first job that you like realize that a human does it, and you're like, wait, I could be that human. <laughs> and for me, that was animation. That was Pixar. Um, just because I saw the credit list and I was like, oh, those are people making shit. I want to be one of those people. So I focused on trying to get into um, animation at first. And I did a little bit of traditional animation, which was amazing. Um, I got pretty good at drawing at the time. It's all gone down the shitter. But um, I didn't realize that illustration was a job. And then um, it finally clicked. You know, because I used to like play Magic and look at the illustrators at the bottom of the card. I'm like, those are just gods. Like, it's not for us peasant humans to do. <laughs> like, um, but then as I got older, I was like, no, I could, I could be one of those people. And as soon as I had that realization, I switched from animation to illustration. Uh, and I wanted to do magic card illustration. I ended up at Riot, um, which is fine. But shit, what was the question? <laughs> did, I, did I ever hesitate <laughs> that that was a thing to do? No, no, no. I've always been drawing. I've always been drawing. Um, it was always a passion of mine. Um, I I literally, <laughs> well, to be fair, I used to think that I could never do anything else. Nowadays, I feel like I could. Um, I'm playing with a lot of a lot more different things in life than I used to. I used to think it was all art, art, drawing, art, art. Um, and sometimes, like, I'll be perfectly honest with y'all, like, I get bored um, of making art. I love looking at art and talking to artists and the artist community. Like, there's there's too much here of value to me for me to ever leave fully but sometimes I just want to like talk about philosophy or I want to like go ride in an airplane um I want to learn how to be a pilot um or I want to yeah like read a book or, or go hiking like there's so much in this world worth doing and it's it's a choice it's not a mandate from God like you you don't get born with it or not it's like are you still interested in it are you still passionate about it um and sometimes it's hard to be passionate because it's it's my job now um and once it's a job it's a little bit harder but um when i started doing art there was no doubt in my mind and that bullheaded stubbornness and focus is what allowed me to progress very very quickly i think if i had been wishy-washy about it there would have been no chance for me and sometimes even since I'd gone to school in Chicago and since I'd started with animation, I felt like I had a lot of catching up to do when I switched to illustration. And my parents were footing the bill for school. So I was like, I can't fuck around. Um, and it would have been even worse um, if I was paying for myself. So I was like, there's there's no time to fuck around. And so, you know, while other freshmen were like getting to know each other and playing DDR and and like just do, and like doing their homework or some shit, I went to the library and I checked out every digital painting DVD and I did all of them in a week. And then the what? following week, I re checked out a bunch of books and did all those exercises. And then the following week, I discovered Concept Design Academy and signed up for classes there. Like, I was voracious. I was focused. And I, and I was looking at the, um, I was looking at the end game. I think some people are like, I'm learning. I'm on this journey and everything is so new. And I'll just like listen to whatever anybody says, which is cool. But it makes a lot more sense if you think about it, if you know what job you want to do to figure out who's doing that job um, and how they got it. Which, again, to be fair, is kind of difficult because you want to email that person and they don't respond to you because they're too busy. Not because they're an asshole. I'm talking for myself. Yeah, here. I was going to say. Personal I'm experience. so busy. I need to do like a, a FAQ or something at the very least because I feel bad for not answering. But those people are tremendously, tremendously busy. But basically, like, yeah, get to the bottom of it, like, Who's doing what you're doing? How did they learn to do it and take the necessary steps to get there? Makes a lot more sense. Um, in my case, like my, my advice for everyone is is so silly. It would just be like learn the fundamentals. Uh, <laughs> because if you learn, it, everything is fundamentals. Like everything in life, but also everything in art. Uh, there's no tricks that you can learn that will ever get you a job uh, the same way that... And no one no one has mastered fundamentals. Everyone's like really... Some people get really close or some people are like on fire. They're all like ramped up. They're drawing every day. They're getting to new level. They blow up on social media and they're like really tapped into something, right? But that person is in a flow state. They are in a really, mm. they're in really close proximity to um, like perfect maneuvering and uh, manipulation of the fundamentals. They're not doing, they're not actually doing anything like 
insanely new. They're just doing the stuff that works really, really well and in a fresh way. And that can only come through the work and that can only come through fundamentals, in my opinion. That's a great answer. Uh, oh, you know what? Not Nars is asking, can we move the cam window so we can see the sidebar toolbar? Okay, wait, hold on. I need mouse control yeah, yeah. for a quick second. I'm going to move our heads then over. There. The little people box. There. Okay. You're good. Uh, Gonza says, do you think age in is influential to the hiring of a person? If you're too young, can people see you as unreliable on a studio environment or something like that? Um, yes and no. I think you've kind of hit the nail on the head where you're not going to get discriminated against based on age in terms of craft. If you're good, you're good. doesn't matter. Uh, right. But yeah, there is that stigma of like, are you mature? Like I certainly was not very mature when I first started at Riot. I was 22. Um, and I was the kind of person where like, you know, the first week I was there, my file crashed and I lost a week's worth of work and I slammed my fist on the desk and people looked at me like I was a psycho, right? Like you can't do that shit. Like you can't have a temper. You need to be cool. You need to have a problem solving attitude. Uh, you need to be able to handle problems as, as they come your way. Um, and so there's, yeah, there's a certain maturity and level of experience that comes with time. I think... Uh, thankfully, people were patient with me, and I specifically was self-aware enough to focus on that uh, very hard because I know it was an area I was lacking in. Um, but yeah, self-awareness is the trump card to everything. Um, if you can know that you have a problem, then you can know how to fix it. If you if you can't see your own problems, you're in for some trouble if you don't have friends who are going to tell you. But yeah, no, like no one ever... No one ever cared who anyone's age was. Like, yeah, maybe if you're 90, we're scared you're going to, like, kill over and die, you know. But uh, And you should honestly be retired and enjoy your life. But, um, yeah, age, age doesn't matter to me at least. No, I agree. I think there might be some stigma of, like, you're 19 and you get a job. Like, do they want to go out? Do they want to party with their friends? Where if you hire someone that's, like, 30, has a family, is very rooted in the area... I think there's a little more security when you hire them. That's a double-edged blade because the kids are going to bring the fire. They're going to stay until, you know, three in the morning just like cranking because they want to oh, prove that's true. They want to prove themselves. Yeah. They want to fucking crush it. They want to like, yeah, like I was that way. Like, and, and everyone I know is that way. Like the first month they're there, they're just cranking out like two, three, four times as much work as everybody else. But then everybody else is like, hey, man, it's cool that you're doing that good luck doing that for like five years straight. You know, you have the people who have been there for a long time. They know they need to pace themselves. And then, like you said, there's like the, the family men that it's their job and then they go home to their families. Like they do what needs to be done. They ship it out the door and then they go home and they unplug, you know? Yeah. Uh, this one's a long one. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Sprout Tink says, hello, Victor, fellow Ringling student here. Howdy. Hearing you talk about your story and art really inspires me as I am also trying to be very focused. I realize the possibility of doing fantasy illustration, what I love the most, and having the dream of doing magic cards or things like this. I want to connect more with professional artists or the industry. Do you have any tips for making connections? Thanks. Um, you're welcome. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, nice to hear from you. Uh, the, for my, in my personal experience... Uh, conventions are huge. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Spectrum. I finally mm -hmm. met all my mm -hmm. heroes and unfortunately I was a bit too much of a fanboy. If you go to my Facebook and you dig up my first Spectrum experience, there's a picture of me standing next to uh, Chris Ron and I'm smiling so wide that it looks like my head is about to split in two. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure that left a pretty weird impression on him. Thankfully, a couple years later, in some miraculous twist of fate, I was his peer and we were going out to dinner together after Magic Concept Push, but, or D&D &D Concept Push, but initially I was total fanboy mode. Try to, try to chill the fanboyness, like I, or, I mean, enjoy it, rather, like, yeah. just lean into it, whatever, like, enjoy, enjoy whatever phase of life you're at, because it's not going to last forever, and there was something really beautiful about when I was younger and there was still so much magic to discovering my heroes, I was like, oh my god. 
you people are so cool. And then you realize they're like just humans and they're kind of tired, <laughs> you know, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, or they're lovely giving people and you can have a chat. But um, yeah, the best way is just going to be go to these conventions, um, meet working professionals or take classes with them, like stuff like Brainstorm School or Concept Design Academy out in California are taught by working professionals. Um, part of the problem of something like Ringling um, even though it's a great school in a lot of ways, is the illustration department is run by a bunch of, like, retired old white men, and they're a little bit out of touch with um, how certain things are made nowadays, which is fine. Although Ringling just hired uh, George. I can't pronounce his last name, but he's a god at drawing. Uh, learn from George, learn from Dominic Avant, learn from, um, what's his name? Hodges Swallow, like, all the painting teachers are so good. Uh, Pratt. Um, but yeah, if you want to network and if you want to get to know people, go to those conventions. Go to Spectrum Fantastic Art Live. LuxCon. Let's get Gen Con has a big fine art section. Get that face to face. I yeah, uh, I, ta I taught a brainstorm. I taught a class of brainstorm. It was very fun. Did you really? Yeah. Um, Maria is asking. Sorry, I know I keep distracting you from your drawing. Oh, good. I I'm, I've sort of got it. As far as it's probably going to get in the stream, right? But carry on. You have 12 minutes. All right, Is there what, any specific spot? What, can, what can I do in 12 minutes? I can do birds. I'll do some birds. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, Maria says, how much do you think a degree is necessary for an It's illustration? not. Degrees are fucking useless for getting jobs. No one has ever asked any artist for a degree. I, know, I don't know if you know this even. Four years ago, uh, I got a job offer at Pixar. And it was funny. They didn't ask for my credentials at all. They only wanted my portfolio. Yeah, guess why? Because they need people who can do the job, not people <laughs> who can pay $200,000. <laughs> Sorry, answer. I'm not trying to be dis <laughs> I I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but it really absolutely matters 0%. Um, one thing it can potentially matter for, um, and this might change in the future, but I think it's the way things are currently, <coughs> is if you want to teach at mm. a... Uh, accredited institution i think you need a degree you need a degree but like again like i taught a brainstorm oh and i i mean i do have a degree but they you know i, I wouldn't have needed one yeah. um so that's how i feel too like accreditation it doesn't mean much to me if anything the better credentials to have are what's your work experience yeah <laughs> uh, i think you nailed on the head too it's like a bunch of old guys that are out of touch with the industry and right would you and they're learn from they're them? not they're not ill-meaning they're not like and it's not like they don't have nuggets of wisdom oh, yeah. um and if they have strong fundamentals it doesn't matter you can still get a lot out of them but you You'd know rather learn from someone in the industry today right and it's like moving so hustle. fast it's moving so fast you need to keep yeah. up especially with technology i mean think about these antiques weren't really here 10 15 years ago yeah. you know thankfully ringling has more antiques than it has students it's insane <laughs> Is that a good or bad thing? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, I guess, yeah, because then every student's accommodated. Exactly. Uh, Leo says, I know if I ask this too much, so sorry if I'm annoying. However, did you ever have problems with perfectionism? Um, if I had to guess, I'm, I'm going to say you didn't, but I'm curious to hear what you think. Yes and no. Perfectionism is, is deeply personal. So what's perfect to me is not perfect to someone else. Um, <coughs> pardon me. For me, what's perfect is um, an image that satisfies all of the goals I set out for it and has the perfect ratio of detail, value, color, shape, proportion to everything else in the piece. Um, but perfectionism for me, and, and pardon me if I'm assuming, like, I don't care about this edge versus this edge, right? Like, is that a more perfect edge? I mean, maybe, but is it the correct edge? Not really. I need that to be a softer edge than this one over here. Um, so I'm more worried about, like, relationships in a painting rather than, like, I mean, I would hardly call any of this perfect, but I'm, I'm, I'm more concerned if it's correct, if that makes sense. But for my splashes, um, <laughs> I will run up to the deadline <laughs> to make it good enough for me. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I'm so sorry. I know that's really annoying. You only got eight more minutes of talking. Okay. And then literally... Hold on. I will say this.
Okay. Usually my splashes are shippable about, you know, a week or two before I'm okay with them, if that makes sense. So I'm still a perfectionist in that sense. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you saying you like your pieces more two weeks out than when it's actually finished? No, no, no. Sorry. Um, a splash is shippable. That is to say it is good enough about a week or two before I finish it. So I need another week or two to finish it to my level. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I, I, I have standards for myself. I don't know if it's perfectionism. I really don't care about perfect. I like, I like a good mess. I like a good mess better than a shitty perfect thing. So if it's like do it 12.30 on Friday, like 12.20 comes around, you're like, okay. Time to I start. Just finished. What? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <coughs> oh, boy. I'm a procrastinator. So bad for your boys right now. No, it's okay. Thanks, I, for, thanks for bearing with me, guys. Yeah, thanks for being a trooper on just talking this long and painting while talking, which is also I kind mean, of... You could call this me. painting, I don't know. Yeah, I think you got... There's oh, something. Sorry, I, don't have the, I don't have power anymore. <laughs> uh, Gonza says, to the connections part, given that I live in a country where not much conventions happen, the only <coughs> source... Me. of networking is the internet and I kind of suck at that. Any advice or way to look at it? That's hard, man. That's really hard. Um, I'm incredibly privileged that my parents moved to the United States so I was closer to the action. Um, I know how it can feel when you're so far away. Um, I will say that um, it's getting better in terms of con like global conventions. There's... Um, yeah. Trojan Horse was a unicorn in Portugal. There's IFCC in no. some Eastern European country. It's escaping me. There's stuff going on in Europe more so than before, but a lot of it is centralized in LA. Um. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Actually, this is kind of great because you made like the first... Hour Croatia, now. Croatia. Thank you, Bjorn. Really good. Croatia. Croatia. Um, so just this. Find a community, man. There's a lot of online communities. It's cool. Uh, a lot of Discord groups, stuff like that. Yeah. Actually, yeah, good point. I forgot to even mention. The Discord link is below if you want to join our community. It's very art-centric and a lot of critiques back and forth. We're trying to do challenges. That'll be something that starts up probably in the summer. But I'll give you more. It'll start with feet. So we'll do the feet challenge eventually. I know a lot of you are waiting on it. But, no, I agree with Victor. I think online networking is second in terms of how to network nowadays in the modern art world where that in-person connection is kind of unforgettable but you might be surprised of where your connections come from i feel like i've met a lot of people just here on twitch i feel like i've gotten to know or just even that weird connection between james zapata just randomly showing up at my twitch stream and he's someone <coughs> that i've been following for years and then just to have that connection like you never know but if you don't put yourself out there the connection will never happen so you got to put yourself on different platforms yes. and videos. Another good idea is to meet as many people as possible because uh, one way connections happen is like a friend of a friend, you know? Yeah. So the more people you know, the more people you know. It's, uh, it's exponential. And even look at like the scenario here. I mean, I work at home in Wisconsin. Victor works at a game company in California. We meet at a convention and now he's here at for an art sabbatical is that a star thank you sprout nick no that's, that's a, a heart. heart it's good enough i love that heart <laughs> love is always good enough <laughs> but yeah and like even sean and key they're two roommates that i literally met at a convention they didn't have a booth or anything they were walking around and now they live with me so you never never know where that connection is going to happen but if you put yourself in scenarios where it becomes plausible for a connection to happen than they do. That doesn't mean they'll always happen, but you'll surprise yourself. I will say, though, um, <clears throat> in conjunction with reaching out and meeting people and creating communities, really, really focus on your art early on. Um, mm. Because unfortunately, and I can say this from experience, <coughs> people aren't really going to pay attention to you until you reach a, thir a certain threshold, um, after which they'll start taking notice. It's not it's not mean. You have to empathize with where they're coming from, where they don't have time to talk to every kid um, who's passionate about art. Um, 
they want you to, you know, get there on your own first, and then they will welcome welcome you in with open arms. That's a really good way to say it, because I think for a while, that was something that I I dealt with, and not knowing, do I have to hit a certain threshold of follower count for me to even talk to you? But if you create quality work, Victor was explaining this to me, then the artist that also creates quality work, there's a connection and almost a relatability, like a familiarity, where it's no longer a fanboy connection. It's literally, peers. I understand what you yeah. go through. Equals, peers. Mm-hmm. It, just, it just makes sense. Like, um, You can only really have a conversation with someone who's like in the ballpark, right? Because otherwise you're talking past each other. Uh, and it becomes, mm-hmm. um, I know it's not intended this way, but it's parasitic where the student is leeching off the experienced person and the experienced person isn't getting anything in return so it's not a good return of investment on their time for their time and they're already really tight on time so they just want to be able to like you know and they want to have a human connection of course so if if an artist goes to a convention they will talk to you um and that's a good time to do it but at the end of the day like you're going to talk to your equals and your peers it's just natural yeah actually the more that I'm, i'm hearing it makes more sense because, like, a few years ago, I feel like I was talking to some people that, you know, I would talk to them at a convention, but I was a kid to them. And now I feel we can connect more on art and less on I appreciate you, specifically just you, and I have nothing Yeah, to that, that's where the conversation ends. Like, if you're like, yeah. oh, my God, I love your work. Like, imagine you're receiving that comment from someone you don't know. That the only sense. thing you can say is thank you. They don't know who you are. They don't know what you do. Um, so the conversation kind of ends there, you know. But they do appreciate it. It's very nice to tell people that you like their work because they could be struggling just as hard as you are um, yeah. and really appreciate the uh, like the confidence boost and just the the connection the, because we do want to connect with people with our work, you know. So it is important. But I, I'm just trying to explain why you're going to get that reaction. Like, thanks. You know, they, they, it's not that they don't like you. It's just they, they got nothing else. And they hear it nonstop every day at conventions. I mean, Tim does, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think uh, there's been a few instances where I almost have to like talk them down and remind them that like, hey, I mean, not in an obvious way, but I'm a person too. I'm much more into having a genuine connection with someone rather than them just appreciating what I do. Yeah. And I think when you were able to break that barrier, all of a sudden you're talking to each other like people yeah. rather than it being this weird levels that I think is pre-established, unfortunately. I will always talk to someone about ideas. Um, if they have an idea about my work, I, I want to hear it. I want to see what their interpretation is. Um, secretly, I want to see if I like nailed my goals, like if, if my br- brain control worked. But if it didn't, that's just as valid and valuable. I'm like super curious to see what they see in it. But right, I think we got one more question because we just hit the four o'clock mark. You did such a good job today. Good job. I appreciate that, Tim. Sorry <laughs> about the voice, guys. I know it's you don't want to hear someone coughing. I appreciate you pushing through. I feel like the last ten minutes I can like hear it of how painful it is. But you've been you've done such a good job. I okay. do it for the kids. <laughs> Leo says, yeah, with perfectionism, I don't mean perfectly pretty rendered or anything, but really making it up to the your own standards, but yeah. never being able to meet them entirely. Yeah, yeah, that never goes away, um, and for good reason. Um, I think if you were satisfied with everything you did, how there's no, would that There's be? no limit, there's no limit. Actually, then I would even question, are you a true artist in the sense of the word, if what you're doing has no challenge or no sense of risk or experiment to it? Called out all you haters out there who are satisfied. <laughs> fucking get good. Tim's coming for you. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite uh, artists, her name is Marina Abramovic. She is a performance artist. She doesn't even do art art, if you want to call it that. But uh, one of the lessons she always tells people is she was taught that if you got so good drawing with your right hand that everything you created was perfect, she said, then you cut it off and you start drawing with the left. Nice. Because unless if you're exploring and you're really stumbling through failure and actively aware of what you're creating and the creation itself becomes more organic, then it's just your machine. And she was saying that there's a difference between, oh, what was it? It was like, 
Oh, I don't want to misquote it either. <laughs> but essentially, an artist creates something that is personal and shows a relatable struggle or a relatable success or something that can connect with the viewer. Where something that is machine relatable, it's more graphic. It's more marketing how good you are. That's very true. There's something so deeply beautiful about someone's struggle. Um, yeah. It's like it connects us as humans. It really does. And you can tell. You can tell. Like when someone's just doing stuff off the cuff all the time, it's impressive, but it's not as beautiful as it's someone who really showcase. tried. <laughs> or, uh, Justin Gerard told me that the way that he sees artists and the art that they create is everyone is a separate island from one another. And art is essentially a little oasis. It's a small little island that sits in between you and another person. And for just a moment, you both like roll there in a boat, you meet and you share that experience on that island and then you go back to your own, your own personal island. So art is a way for us to connect even though if we're not fully able to see where that person's coming from, there's like a glimpse of it in the form of art which I thought was really cool too. That's beautiful, Justin Rules. Yeah, if you guys don't know Justin Gerard, you know what? I, I don't know what my expectation of Justin and Annie were before I went to that fantastic workshop last year. Like, kindest people, I think, I they, could have met. They literally couldn't be sweeter. I don't Yeah. I don't think. And uh, I talked to him about how me and the roommates are doing a lot of road trips this summer for these conventions we're going to. He sent me a two, like two emails with like, paragraphs of where he thinks we should go and like all these tips of like somewhere in Colorado like a horseshoe he gave me specific he gave me a map and like pointed out specific spots to go in I'm like Justin has my heart right like what a, what a great guy and something I always tell the roommates and my goal in life is to become a fantastic artist but more than that I want to be it, it equaled by being a humble and gracious person that gives to people. I never want to get to the point where if I meet someone in person that they have this bad, sour taste in their mouth after meeting me. So far, so good, Tim. <laughs> oh, boy. Good. The facade's working. Uh. <laughs> but no, seriously, I think that's something that if you guys are trying to you know, aspire to be great artists, also keep in mind the way that you're treating other people. It's, it's huge. It's, it's a very small industry. Be and nice. it sounds cheesy. Oh, that's the other thing. It is a small industry. I know who you are. If you get a bad reputation in the art world... Talk shit, get hit. <laughs> people will know. Yeah. I, I'm surprised. Yeah. Word gets around. like, And, um, you know, I, I try to uh, give people the benefit of the doubt. Like, I'll try to meet them in person first. But it's kind of hard when you're trying to hire somebody and immediately you're your teammate to the left is like, oh, that guy's an asshole. You're like, well, DQ, yeah. baby. There's something that I think Victor's been showering me with in his knowledge that I've just been like absorbing like a sponge. I, well, which one do I even say right now? I think it's one of those rules that you were talking about, and it's to not put out poison in the world, not speak ill, yeah. and uh, to be aware <clears throat> of what you're saying, and if you're actually speaking truth that is like helpful or if you're just bad talking something because you want to well i know why i would i try to lift myself up by bringing someone else down yeah but i feel like most people do that in some regard it goes back to that zero sum game or even that talking about like how to critique movies is like yeah just just be careful i think a lot of us uh speak ill of things without even realizing it and usually because the things you talk shit about you have justified in your mind why you can talk shit about it, mm -hmm. but really just cut cut that out. Um, it's it's not good for anything, and it and it is bringing you down more than it is bringing down the thing you're talking about. The person or thing you're talking about probably won't hear you, um, but you are hearing you, and and the people around you are hearing you, and it's affecting them more. So, again, like just focus on what you love. And you know what's funny is, you might not even realize how much you're hurting yourself in the long run because. Yeah if you're putting out this negative energy, that's unattractive. Especially very, if you're like you're meeting new people or you're at conventions. Imagine having just a very positive, upbeat energy. People will be attracted to you. Oh, yeah. Especially people that might be in the higher ups that kind of feel jaded or feel like right. all their art friends have just kind of lost that initial fire. But if you come and you're like, yeah, I'm so excited to do art and you know, you bring this positive energy, people will be attracted to that. It's pretty simple math. If, if it's a toss-up um, between two people, 
of equal skill, you're going to go for the positive guy because you want yep. someone you can work with and you want someone who's going to make your life bearable because you have to work every day <laughs> because capitalism, we're all slaves. Um, so, you know, you want it to at least be somewhat enjoyable. Can we take one more question since the perfectionism one was like a two-parter? Yeah. Okay. Just in case there's any sneaky last ones. Oh, yeah. Well, we're getting a lot of best dreams. Oh, best dreams, period. That was good. There you go. Best dream was amazing. It's all good. You nailed literally all questions, Victor. Oh, thank you. Jim says, yes, really awesome, guys. Thanks for the insight. Thanks for the amazing stream. That was so beautiful. I saw that in mine. Um, Tim, did you ever pick up the book Picture This from Molly Bang? No. I'll write it down, though. If I don't, I'll forget I guess, you know what, you know what the final question should be? I want, do you have any final either insight or statement that you want to leave as an impression or for people to have leaving the stream? Oh, wow. Well, yeah. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Wait, no, it's not the weekend anymore, right? No, it's um, literally hump day. Okay. Well, thanks, thanks you guys for joining us. Oh my God, Mike Hodges. I was thinking about Mike. I am so overdue for sending him a thank you letter. That guy was one of the good ones. He was one of the good ones. Mike Hodges is a brilliant, brilliant professor and very giving man. Oh. I need, I'm after the stream. I'm sending him a thank you letter because he is he is a blessed person, so giving. Um, what I would leave you with is, um, just because I'm on this like philosophical kick. Yes, I think that's a good thing to leave him with. <laughs> uh, think for yourself. Enjoy the ride. Um, Nothing is too, too serious and nothing is as set in stone as you think it is. Um, and yeah, be nice to each other. You know what's funny is I started saying at the end of my streams and apparently Ellen DeGeneres says at the end of her really? TV show. It's important. Like, it's important, Ellen, especially yeah. nowadays. It's very important. It's very underrated. Yeah. To add to your final note, I think I've gotten further in my art career because of how i treated people yes and, and it wasn't uh it wasn't contrived you're actually no, a nice like person genuinely. and you're reaping the rewards i wish more people would give credit to others in terms of their own level of success a yes. lot of us have this i don't know if it's, an it's American fear thing. it's fear yeah i like i got to here because of how hard i worked or blah blah, blah. i got here because of how lucky i've been yes. in, in positions where i've met people at the right time at the right point in my life and or i've had people share me out or I've, you know i think it's good to be thankful to the people outside of yourself in terms of your success in your career so know that it's not just you that adds to the sum of your success it's definitely an Ooh. accumulation of others actually okay so i have one more thing <laughs> <laughs> this is how victor and i have conversations yeah. bouncing um i actually struggled really really hard uh until fairly recently, about two or three years ago, with um, a, a ton of negativity and, and um, self-hatred and, and depression and stuff like that, um, I just want to leave people with this. You have the power to change yourself. You absolutely, 100%, have the power to change yourself for the better. Um, you're not stuck where you are. Change isn't going to happen overnight, but um, any, anyone can do it. I, I do believe that. And, and find people who are going to help you on your journey and aren't putting you down, you know? <laughs> Surround yourself with positive people. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Cool. Thanks, right. thanks well, so thank much, Thank you again, Tim. Victor. Honestly, I'm impressed with what you were able to do in two hours. Oh, my God. It's, it's very so embarrassing. Longer. Thanks for bearing with me. Um, and that's all I got. Uh, join us next Wednesday. I don't have anything planned yet, but I'm sure I'll share it with you guys two hours before it starts. And, yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. This was a good one. Yeah, fridges to all. Fridges to all, I love it. It's a golden fridge? Mm-hmm. I'll the tell you the backstory of that later. Cool. Oh, wait, what? There we go. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. I'm going to take in the subway. So, <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. And then I have to, like, awkwardly. <laughs> oh, wait, where's the mouse? Shit. Oh, there it is. <laughs>